All right, guys, let's take a look at mug printing. The ceramic, really any material it can be. Um, this particular piece of tooling is self-adjusting for different diameters. Um, not a, a large difference, but this particular piece of tooling is manufactured to accommodate the variances seen in the ID of ceramic. So you'll see these fingers go in and out to accommodate a range for one part size really, but because of this variances in ceramics, it's made to go in and out to support the inside of the mug and keep it, you know, parallel with the bottom of the screen when the screen comes down. So just to give you an idea of what printing looks like, you've got your ear and your rack on the back side, and then you've got this holding the handle. That's how you're registering off the handle. So you'll see when I print, it's gonna go around and image placement in the screen is important. Your stops, the stop to flood going this way and the print stop here and there telling the machine that a print is complete is important. So those are all things to consider when you're setting up. It only takes a minute or two to set up, but just to give you an idea of what you gotta be doing, I'm gonna hold that. Typically there's gonna be a pusher here, a pneumatic pusher to keep the mug on, but that's what a print looks like. Pretty clean. So when you're doing multiple colors, same idea. You're just maintaining your registration off of the handle. The gear is going to rotate and spin everything and keep everything repeatable is the idea. So just looking over from the top, this is what it looks like from the top. Transferring the ink to the screen and you'll see it rotated around and goes back. And uh, that's good because you're just loading over and over again the same. You probably get about say five or 600 prints per hour. Take a look from this side as well. Cups are a little gunked up at this point. I've done a, a bit of testing on these just to dial in the tooling. Obviously, that's all stuff that we do here. You guys don't have to worry about that, but just to show you. Always gotta make sure that your handle is locked in. Tap the foot pedal. And you're pushing things through the screen. So when you're doing, say, a second color, say your lines, the logo, this line was all one color, then you want to put the print and here in another color, you would separate your screen that way. So you'd have two separate screens, one for each color. And to register, you'd basically load one of the cups. Then you would cut the air in the back. You'd have a fresh screen, so you'd be able to look over it and look through it. While you're, you know, spinning by hand the screen, you're also looking through the top to actually locate this image with the other one. So you could actually, it's hard to see on camera, but you can see through the screen, the open screen, to a line where your image is going to be. So when you're doing multiple colors, that's how you do it. Just double printed on this one, half of it, but that's okay. This next print, this is actually a good thing to see. What happens when you sometimes double hit something just for training purposes, tutorial purposes. Let's take a look. This. I would venture to say that the bottom's gonna be missing because I wasn't holding. Yep. So pushers there that doesn't happen obviously when you order tooling 
this particular tooling. It's gonna come with a pusher, but this is just for, just for show. So, fingers there. Nice clean print. So the reason that we missed here was because as this is coming around, there was nothing pushing it flush against the base of these stops here. So it was dipping down as it's traveling, the bottom starts to you know come down. So the pusher's here to keep that in locked in nice and tight, flush against that backstop. because the pusher will be with the tooling. Nice sharp print. Believe it or not, this particular, as you can see, I've already printed on it and tried to wash it off, but it was unsuccessful. Sometimes some materials like to uh, absorb the ink, even when you're trying to clean it off, but that's okay. This is just, again, for training purposes and to show how it works. So this tooling wasn't made for this, but it coincidentally has a very similar diameter. The only thing different really is the play here because the handle is a little smaller. So again, I'm gonna push it and hold it against that flat. And I would venture to say this should print just fine. So if we wanted to bring the print down, we can do a few things. You can move this whole tooling plate that way. There's a dial that over there that you spin and it moves everything that way. So you could bring your image to locate it better. You can also obviously um, move your screen this way, that way to bring it down. But this was just to show that the tooling can be used for multiple parts. Although typically customers buy one piece of tooling per, do another one. Show the top. It's nice and clear. So for example, something like this, is much smaller. So you would not be able to print this and it doesn't get up over, you know, the lip there because it's too small of an inner diameter. So that's why you would need a separate piece of tooling for that smaller diameter jug or mug, whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, and then from there, obviously, it's smaller, so your print surface is going to need to be lower. And what you would do there is just cut the air, and then you've got a lock here, lock here, and a wheel up top. You just wheel it down and just take a look at the surface of your printing surface, and you're going to see this whole assembly is going to lower down or you can raise it up. So there's a turn wheel here and up there for different diameters. And that's mug printing.